Hello everyone, welcome back and today we are going to start talking about the second part of our IKEA AR app clone. So in the last tutorial we saw that how we can pick one of the model from internet and we can spawn that in the um, air space by using a um, simple raycast method provided by air foundation right so we created this input manager that will throw a ray when you tap on the screen and then it will uh, spawn an AR object that um, we have provided with a prefab right so um, it will take the heat location of that raycast and it is going to spawn the object into that location in our uh, AR world now one object is fine but in real example we are basically going to need multiple objects right so there should be a bunch of listings that you can pick from and then we can select one of the object to spawn in our AR environment so today we're going to exactly uh, try to figure out how we can do that and in the next tutorial I'll show you how we can improve that uh, with a uh, design pattern so let's get started so first thing we need to think about is that we need to assign this object through somewhere right so whenever we we click into some UI say if we click onto table then this object will be a table if we select uh, for example a chair this object will be that chair and so on so uh, to do that the first thing we need is some UI so I'm going to design some UI here right click go to UI and then um, create a button I'm going to actually create a panel first okay um, although I just need to change a few things just gonna delete that and do it again go to UI then panel go to the canvas make it a screen space uh, screen space overlay that is fine but the scale mode make it scale with screen size and in the reference res resolution make it something usual right so the bigger value is uh, better so I'm going to do 1920 by what was the resolution 1920 by 1080 so 1080 and also we need to make sure that the math is 0 0.5 okay okay that's good so the next thing we can do now is that work with our panel so what I want to do is put the panel somewhere around here so I want to scale it down and also if we go to the stretch here in this mode if you hold shift and alt together then like click on this option which is the bottom center uh, that is going to um, put this panel and keep it here no matter how big or how small your UI is so I'm just gonna call this panel as uh, buttons container the next thing we need to do is adding a few buttons so I'm going to create a UI uh, button and one thing we can do with this panel is that we can add a layout here we can just add some horizontal layout group with this um, container so we can just spawn multiple buttons side by side later on we're going to uh, improve this UI a little bit so it looks more professional we're going to add some scrolling effect so but for now I think this is uh, good enough for today's, today's example so we're just going to see how we can make this button works right so I'm just gonna delete this 
first create one button and then we can spawn multiple copy of it so right we can go to the button container and make it um, middle center middle left maybe yeah that makes more sense okay then uh, what should we do is basically change the text to chair and again this is going to be completely different we're going to add some more images make it more appealing the button shouldn't be like this but for this example we are just going to use a simple button okay but we're definitely going to change this because this is really ugly um, I'm gonna spawn two more and call them table and uh, I don't know rack cabinet never mind whatever so right now we have these buttons we need a script so that the buttons um, are basically clickable and the button buttons are currently clickable but we need to add a logic so that when we click the button something happens right so I'm just gonna create a new UI manager so this script is going to handle um, everything that comes with this button okay uh, not only this button any kind of UI um, behavior okay so the first thing we need is obviously the button and then we can in the start we can start we can just do button equal get component button okay actually you know what don't use it use the name as UI manager we can just say um, button manager and make sure that that name is a exactly the same as here right so we need to replace it twice here and there as well okay so we have a button manager class now this class is going to help us to select a particular furniture when we click on that button okay so after we assign the button then we need to assign a event so we're just going to do button dot on click dot add listener and here we can pass a method so I'm just going to create a method here uh, select object right so this select object is going to be called whenever we uh, whenever we click on the button right so this is where we are going to change this uh, variable this variable okay so now rather than putting everything in the input manager the input manager does not necessarily have to know about um, this like AR object right so we don't probably we don't need to do it here we can do it somewhere else so what I prefer to do is that later on we'll see that we'll have a data container class that is going to contain all the game um, object right that is going to be spawned so I'm going to create that now and I'm going to pass that um, variable in that particular script I'm just going to create a data handler and in the class I'm just going to store that variable public game object mm, furniture okay. and we also need a 
um, we also need to create an instance of this class so there is a lot of ways of doing it but what I prefer is to use a singleton pattern so I am using a very very basic uh, singleton pattern code here there is multiple way of implement implementing singleton pattern um, so I'm just going to use a property which is going to be a type of this class name so data handler okay um, then I'm going to give it a name the name should be instance okay and this is going to be a static okay we don't need to set anything we just need the get getter um, here we need to do I don't know maybe private we don't need public we just do private static data handler instance right so what we're going to check that if the instance is basically null if the instance is null we are going to create an instance we're just going to do instance equal then find object of type And the type is obviously data handler right so if we find the um, data handler class then we're just going to pass that instance in here otherwise the instance should be obviously null so there should be at least one instance there should be only one instance of this uh, class and then if we did find instance that means we already have an instance then we just going to return that instance here okay okay now we can use this um, instance uh, property in a different class to call any method or property from this class right so what we're going to do is that in the button manager I'm going to create a game object public game object um, furniture and in set select object I'm just going to do game object sorry data handler dot instance dot furniture is equal to furniture and remember one thing that the way we are um, doing it right now is not the best way of doing it obviously this is not best practice uh, in terms of software engineering or uh, design pattern so we're going to edit all this code later on to make it more um, you know fluent and more uh, designer friendly so when you when you try to extend your code that is more easier we're just going to add some uh, more sophisticated design pattern inside uh, this um, code but for now we just want to make it work just want to show you how you can do it in a uh, pretty sim sim like simple way and I'm also going to talk about if we do it in this way what are the problem that we can face and why we need to improve the design pattern right so I'm gonna talk about that as well but for now this is all good this is um, all you need to make it work okay so yeah I think uh, we are done with the button manager and the data handler last thing we need to do is rather than spawning an AR object we are going to spawn this thing we're just going to spawn the data handler right so um, here where I'm spawning the AR object I'm just going to comment this line and we can do this we can do game no sorry data handler dot instance instance dot furniture right so we're just going to spawn the furniture game object that we get from the data handler okay we don't need it anymore that's good so the final part is to go back to unity and configure all these things that we just did first thing is that we need to add the button manager script we can just click on add 
component type button manager okay that's weird right so somehow the name got changed remember we changed the name from UI manager to button manager so you need to make sure that the name match in both places right here and in the script that was the error so now I think we'll find the button manager yes good so the next thing we need is to add a furniture corresponding to each uh, button so we need a chair we need a chair uh, table and we need cabinet so I'm just gonna grab those three models from again sketchfab we already had the chair from last class I'm going to go to here and let's just maybe look for another chair okay so you can use this one Just gonna create a folder so we can store everything. Uh, we need a table. And I already have a sofa. I'm going to change this cabinet with sofa. Right. So now I can go back here where I downloaded all the assets. I'm just going to expand them, import them in my models folder. Okay, I'm going to see recording. So I have imported the assets here, and now similarly than be like before, I'm just going to drag them inside my Unity project. Make sure the textures are applied there, and then going to um, make a prefab out of it right so i'm just gonna drag and drop the prefab um, drag and drop the model inside the prefab folder next the table the table doesn't have any texture yet so we can just drag and drop the texture inside the model that is going to apply the texture directly into the model okay and um, again I'm going to drag and drop the model inside the prefab folder and finally delete both of them from my scene right okay um, again remember one thing that when you are actually developing these apps for real world you should make sure that the scale factor is basically the same as the real world application for example if a table is one meter long um, then you are going to make the scale factor to one but if the table is basically two meter then you might need to make it as two right so one meter in real world is equivalent to one um, unit in unity okay okay um, so what's next next thing is basically going to be simple we're just going to go to each of them the first one is a chair 
second one is a table so we're just going to go to each of the buttons right and make sure that we apply the correct model inside here inside the button manager so chair we're just going to drag and drop the chair model for the table we're just going to drag and drop the table model for sofa we're just going to drag and drop the sofa model that's it and now as you can see this is quite um um like handy right so you can just create multiple buttons you can just duplicate it you can just duplicate it i can grab another model and then i can just drag and drop the model in here and that's it we are all set up right we don't have to do any kind of change any kind of additional change to handle a new model in our uh, in our game but still i am not satisfied with this design uh, what will happen is that if we have hundreds of model right so we want to uh, up, do, up, update our model from a external server whenever we add a model into that server the game automatically updates itself it doesn't have to be done manually from unity right so your app should be in the app store when the user load it apps it will download all the assets it will create all the uh, buttons automatically and you don't have to do it manually each time you update your project so that is exactly what kind of uh, design pattern we need to develop this kind of AR app. So we're going to talk about that in the next lessons. But for now, this is going to work pretty good and uh, we can test it out in our actual phone in a while. Uh, but before that, I am going to configure the data manager that we created. So drag and drop the data manager. And by default, we need to put a furniture here because otherwise it might create an error. So I'm just going to uh, drag and drop the table as a default um, data inside our data handler. And what else? Let's see. Input manager is all set up. So I think we are all good. So let's create a build of this project and see the output. 